Hey everybody, welcome to Jerry's Live. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner-Dean, and today we have a special guest, Sharon DiGiulio, that's going to be talking about Virtual Art of the Carolinas that we have coming up in November. But she's also going to be giving us a really quick mini virtual one hour workshop that kind of gives you an idea of what you can actually accomplish in just one short hour, let alone three, that is the length of the Art of the Carolinas workshops. So um, if you're, she's going to be doing some printmaking with jelly plates. So, and there's acrylic paint, there's some paint markers, there's all sorts of good stuff. So if you are following along and you're interested in any of those supplies, or maybe you're watching this after the fact and you want to use this as a workshop for yourself, you can go to the juriesartorama.com website, type in JL174, that's JL174, that's a keyword that will pop up the list of the supplies that Jerry's has, although I can see she's brought all sorts of, of extras, leaves, and fun things to print with. So, um, so that's how you find that. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get started very quickly, just with, with COVID and social distancing, I'm going to be off camera uh, at a socially safe distance so that Sharon can be up here. Uh, but I will still um, be asking questions of her and talking while she's working just with, uh, I guess, our normal fun chatter. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get out of the way, Sharon, so you can get started. And we'll see you at the end. All right. Sharon, take it away. Okay. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Woo, okay, <laughs> let me see, where should I put this, there, okay. So, um, today, tonight we're gonna be doing some jelly plate printing. Oh, and let me tell you about Art of the yeah, Carolinas first. first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this year we had to cancel our regular Art of the Carolinas because of COVID. And um, so we came up with this great idea to do online workshops and they're, we have a lot of them on there too. I think we have 52 and they're all three hours long and um, all any kind of medium you want. And I think they're gonna be a lot of fun. Something different, something maybe a little weird, but the cool part is you get to do it in your own home, in your own space and the comfort there. And if you forgot something, you oh, it's just right there on the shelf. So, um, bear with us and we'll do this. We can, you know, we'll get through this 2020 if it kills us. Right. And then um, next year we will um, be celebrating our 20th anniversary for Art of the Carolinas, hopefully in person. And, um, but until then, this is kind of what we're offering. So um, today, tonight, I have some uh, jelly plate prints mm -hmm. and we, we've got these, um, this kind here is the gel plate. And then also Speedball makes one as well. So they come in all different sizes. These particular sizes, I think this is a, what, 10? Oh, no, this is a round one. Ooh, I haven't tried this one yet, so I'm excited to do that. And this is a six by six here. So um, today we're going to be working with metallics. I've got the um, Matisse metallic paints here. These are structure, heavy body paints. And then I have the PBO markers. These are really cool. These are the kind where, let me open a new one here. So they come with a white tip and you might think, well, that's not very good. That's not doing anything, but you shake it until it pop, and then just kind of pump it out like this. And eventually magic on the camera. So now it, then you can just paint like that. So today we're going to be painting on black paper. Um, I love the metallics on the black paper. I think it's just kind of shimmery and kind of fun, something different to work with. And I've been doing this like all during COVID in my studio. So I've got tons of examples that I'm going to show you. And, um, and then I'll show you how I did it. Now these were just some leftover pieces because I did this huge project and these were the cutoffs that I had left from my paper. So anyway, what you can do is just make some fun marks, paint. These are all gel plate printed first and then I come back over them with these 
uh, PBL markers. So I'll hold them up to the camera for now. She's on the front. Oh, okay. I think there you go. <laughs> so uh, these are just kind of fun. They're sort of doodly, scribbly sort of things. And the great part about these is you're just kind of messing around as you're doing it. And um, it's not like a finished project, um, but you can do that later. You can tear these up and put them in your collage. You can make um, cards out of them. What I use, especially this size, is bookmarks. So I'll take these and I'll laminate them and um, put some threads on there. And I have them in my books that I've been reading lately. So, <laughs> hey, why not? Okay, so I'm going to put some gloves on because I'm kind of a messy painter and I had a little bit of a stash left in my studio so now as you're doing that something that I want them to understand because I've been helping train the artists for how this virtual art of the Carolines is gonna go is that when you're taking a workshop it's not like our show where if you type in a question maybe it will get answered at some point they will actually be able to watch demos they will be able to um, the, the artist will have a moderator, an assistant, that yes. will be able to ask questions. There even will be a, a point with some artists, depending on how the artist wants to run the classroom, where they'll be able to engage their camera to actually show their work, potentially to get feedback, yes. depending on how each artist wants to run their class. So I, I've heard people being concerned that this, because it's not an in-person workshop, they're not going to get that same kind of one-on-one -on -one interaction. Uh, interaction where they'll be able to also get feedback on their work. So mm -hmm. I, I want people to understand mm -hmm. that where this show is not doesn't have that because we're not on a Zoom with the ability to, to run cameras and stuff with the viewers, that's something that they should expect right. to be able to do with virtual AOC. Right, and I think initially what they're going to do is the instructor will set it up just like we do at Art of the Carolinas where... The instructor does a demo at the beginning and they'll talk you through what they're doing, what paints they're using, what supplies they're using, what the surface is, why they're using this brush to put that there. And, um, and then in the meantime, they'll have you all muted. So, um, but you can also type things in in the Q&A that he, will, he or she will get to once they're finished with their demo. And, you know, so it, it is an interactive sort of thing and they have the ability to mute or unmute you and you can start your video or unstart it. And um, so then you can say, hey, you know, this is what I'm doing. What do you give me some help here? You know, right. um, so there will be that sort of interaction. Um, so, again, it's going to be something different, something um that we might have to get used to for a long time. I don't know. So um, we're just going to do the best we can and have as much fun as we can and keep you all painting. So um, let's go ahead and get started here. I've got, I'm going to use the um, Jelly Arts um, thing here. Okay, so they all come in these clam shells. So you just open it up and you want to keep this too because it's great to store your um, plate in. These are all pristine. <laughs> brand new. <laughs> oh my. Okay, so they come with an acetate over the top. You want to keep that and then you want to keep this one too. And those are just protectants because you, these are like um, not fluid surfaces, but they're, they're gel. It's silicone. So you don't want to gouge into that. You want to keep this surface nice and clean and um, you can work on the top of it. So let's see, we're going to put that one there. And then I'm really excited about this round one too. <laughs> Not used a round one before. Um, and I tend to um, use multiple ones when I'm painting just because usually I paint like <laughs> in a large area and I keep everything, I, I paint it all up and keep it all out there to dry. And then I'll go to step two and um, the, the, they'll be dry by then, so, all right. <laughs> all right, so again, you wanna keep this part here and this part here. All right, so I'm just gonna kinda set these by each other like that. They're so pretty. That'll be clean. good. Hmm? They're so pretty when they're clean. <laughs> I know, <laughs> yeah, enjoy this. <laughs> 
Okay, so let's see here. Okay, so I have, um, this is bronze and metallic and, or metallic gold and metallic silver. So I'm just going to put some of that there. You don't need a whole lot. Um, however, I find if I get a little heavy handed with my paints that, um, that's good too, because it kind of pulls up on the paper and then, and it adds a little texture to it. I learned to justify everything doing collage <laughs> just kind of works that way. So I just kind of, I'm going to use the same brayer for both. And I'm also going to use this intersection to just to add a little interest there. What is that? little gooey. Okay, so I'm just <laughs> making a mess here. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just going to, this, you can use any old black paper. Um, today I have the Faber-Castell black paper sketch pad. Can you see that? Oh, all right, let's go like this. Wait. <laughs> nope. Let's see. Yeah, there go. This way. There, there we, we go. go. Okay, so there's that. And then um, here I have some Stonehenge. This is Aqua Cold Press Black. So this is watercolor paper here. And that's cotton as well. And so what? That's cotton paper. Oh, okay, cool. So that if you're, and, if you're going for like that fine art, you know. Right. And it's got a little bit of a right. texture to it too, um, which is always fun. I, I like to use a combination of everything. Okay, so here I'm just going to slap this right on here. And press it down and then reveal this and see I love that I mean wow, it's so cool and see you can get this curvature here that's why I like to work on multiple gel plates mm -hmm. at the same time just because you can okay let's try a little bit of this and I never clean my plate in between, um, whether I'm using all metallics or different colors or white or whatever. I just keep layering, layering, layering because I find that the best thing is like cleaning it up. It, yes. You get like multiple layers and um, you get some things that you weren't expecting. And you just get to play. That's the cool part. Just pretend like you're a kid in the sandbox and you have nothing to do but make mud pots. So you can go like this and then sometimes I'll go like that and then I can take another one here take that part. Okay so now I'm, again I'm just getting some cool images on this black paper. Okay. And I can also kind of clean my um, brayer if I want to, and you can go like that. And then you also get some texture going on. So, it's almost like you're getting a print and a ghost print at the same time. By yes. Having that. Yeah. And here, and, and this is just this is just the first part. <laughs> okay. And then what I do. When, um, when I continue on the next part, then I kind of respond to these marks that I've made on the papers with the, um, with the metallic pens. Ooh. I just love the metallics on the black. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing that wasn't on the list, but I found in my studio <laughs> is some of these Lumiere paints. And these are great. Now, anything that I'm doing today on these gel plate prints or the black paper, you can also do on black fabric. So mm -hmm. if any of you are sewers, seamstresses. And that's the Jacquard Lumiere, right? The, uh, yes. Yeah, the Jacquard. Okay. So here, let's get a little bit of this. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's something about metallics that just gets me. Oops, did I get it in my hair? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> say, that, that, that'd be surprising. <laughs> Metallic <laughs> looks great in your hair, just so you know. <laughs> okay. 
It's the COVID fashion trend. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, now see? See how what, it picked up some of those other colors underneath. So, um, whoops. There we go. Uh-huh. Oh, nice. And see, I like when you use multiple gel plates, you can get this kind of action going on. Okay, so now let's do a little gold. So that's just the basic paint and brayer on your jelly plates. And then now we're going to do some impressions in there. And use some, I brought some of these guys. These are the Cedar Creek plates. I think I used these in my mm -hmm. um, previous collage class. But these are cool. They come in, um, I think you get like six or so to a packet. And they come in different shapes, the curvatures and foliage and all kinds of stuff like that. So you can use these just like you would a stamp and press that in there. So now take note. I've got paint on this side. So now I can go and put that on here. Something that I, and I smeared it a little bit, but you see that. You can do it like that. Nice. But I've also made an impression on here, so I can take my paper and go like this and pull that part up. And see, you can see it's how it pulled a little bit of that green up from underneath because I didn't clean it. See? Isn't it great? You don't have to clean stuff. <laughs> Quick question. Yes. Somebody was asking if you can use gouache on the gel plate. Yeah, I don't see why not, because gouache is kind of like a um, uh, like a heavy body uh, watercolor, so, and it's kind of okay, like an acrylic, too. We want to make sure we're very clear. The You're acryl. saying watercolor gouache, not acrylic gouache. No, acrylic gouache. You could use both, I think. I would be really... Acrylic gouache sticks to everything, and then you have to use... To clean it up. To clean it would up. I would be really afraid it would eat into that plate, and you, it would be almost... Like you would have to hmm. probably use alcohol or hand sanitizer or something like that. Well, that's like how that you do to... these anyway, because uh, acrylic paint, some of the staining yes. colors will will stain them. I mean, you, I've got some old ones in there I can show. Um, as long as you keep the surface nice and clean, then you can do that. But um, I don't see why you couldn't use the gouache on the black paper. Mm. You might keep away from doing it on the gel plate prints just because... But, I don't know, does yeah. that really answer, that doesn't really answer your question. But, um, okay, so let's do a little bit more green. And I'm going to concentrate on this one over here, because I grabbed some leaves from my gardenia outside. And I want to show you, okay, so you can use these to... I'm going to actually do this side because it's got more veins on it like that. Okay, so what's going to happen is I'm going to cover this with the black paper and um, it's going to be, it'll be like a barrier, but it's also going to be pushing the veinage into the plate. So let me show you. The botanical, correct term. The veinage. The yes. I like that. <laughs> Okay, so here, so now you can pull that up and see how it nice. did like a barrier there. And then you pull these guys up. And remember, you still have paint on this side here, so I'm going to stick that right there. And then this one, I'll stick that right there and hang on that for a second. And then go back over here and pull this one. So this, this will give you the details of those leaves. Like so. And again, it's got that, um, it's got um, all the other paint that was on the gel plate on here too. Okay, then I'm gonna do these guys. I have a question actually that yes. might be perfect for this timing. <laughs> um, 
Then he said, is there something special about the gel plates? It seems like similar effects could be made using, say, a glass sheet or something else like that. But I think the squishy is what helps you get the texture of those. Right, plates, right. Okay? And you can do this on a glass or a um, plexiglass or anything like that. But it, um, it doesn't have that give to it. So... Um, but yes, you can still do that. It, it might smear a little bit more mm -hmm. just because it doesn't have anywhere to go um, except for into your paper. But see, now these, so you'll see, let's see, we did this one, and we did this one, and we did this one, all from the same two leaves. So it, it just kind of gives you... A different so idea cool. of how those leaves are gorgeous. That looks like lace. Yeah, yeah, isn't that cool? It really picks up the texture nice with yes. the and the great there. part too is again, this is just messing around. It's not like uh, something that I'm gonna frame this, but I can take this and I can use some scissors and cut this out and put it into a collage or onto a card or um, you know, into another piece or use it, you know, then I can take this and I can decorate it, paint it some more with the metallic markers, and I can use this as my focal point on a larger piece. So there's, there's so much you can do with this. And what I like about it is one of my favorite things to do with collage in general is just play, just mess around and, and not have to worry about, oh my God, is it the right color? Is it the right anything? It's just, you're just messing around. I like to mess around. Perfect for artist block. Yes. Oh, absolutely. You're just doing something. You don't owe the work anything. It doesn't owe you anything. You just are, are in there and you're getting messy and you're having fun. And Right. And that's what art should be fun. And this is just one of those things that you can do. You can, and the great part about this too, um, older, like if you want to paint with your grandma or your grandpa or your young kids or grandkids, anybody can do this. We've done this at the beach so many times where we've got the whole everybody doing it and everybody is having fun and they're getting some good results and I'm learning from them too. <laughs> so, okay, let's go back to this. And see, I like how you can get a texture just by um, pushing this, you know, you can go like this and not really get anywhere, but it still gives you um, some shading around the edges that you might want. Uh, let's go ahead and put it on this one. I'll show you that. See how you just get a different edge. It's not perfect. But who likes perfect? That's boring. Okay, let's try some stencils. And these work kind of the same way. Um, one of the gals that is teaching for Art of the Carolinas has stencils available that she does through um, Stencil Girl. And her name is Trish McKinney. She'll be teaching a couple of classes, um, doing some similar stuff with the gel plate prints. And they're, they're just so much fun. You can, she, she does a lot more cooler stuff with, it, you know, um, adds paintings on top and uses this kind of as the background. Um, but okay. So here I've got some lace and I'm just going to set this down on here. And then I'm using this black paper to press it down to make an impression in that paint that's on top of the gel plate. And I may get some color here, but I didn't, so that's okay. So I'm gonna pull this up. Might be a little dry. I might've been talking too much. That's one of the things that you should do um, when using these uh, gel plate prints is work quickly, or you can also add um, like a, a, a retardant in there. Um, any kind of medium will do that. Yeah, that one didn't show the lace too great. But that's okay, because we're just experimenting. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do this. Let's add a little bit of this in here with it. It's kind of making it a whole different color. Yeah, it's just like this. Very nice. Throw some of that on there. And these stencils, I just pick them up at random places and um, 
You can use all kinds of things. You can cut your own too. Okay, so here. And let's put this one on here. Sharon, they want to know if you're teaching a workshop there in the Carolinas. No! <laughs> Gotta run it! Actually, um, I've been asked that before and uh, I would love to and I might do something like afterwards because I have been messing around with the video and um, it's it's pretty easy to do. It's just kind of scary to me. <laughs> uh, <yep. laughs> Teaching an old dog to new, do new things, you know. You really used to it by the end of this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm leaving impressions on this on these gel plate prints too, or the gel plates. So then here, I'll go like this, and pull those up. Ooh, I like that color mixed together. Yeah, that's That's really the nice. um, silver and then the um, Lumiere. It's almost like a, a it's like almost. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Patina. All right, so let's see. What else can we do? Let's do... Sharon, are you, are you using a hard or soft brayer? Why that was so hard. I am using... Those are the hard ones. A hard one. <laughs> yeah, this uh, it's black. Um, but you can use sponge rollers. You can use anything. You can use a paintbrush to apply it if you want to. And a lot of times I, on these, I just want to like clean these off. Oops. And you can just get some cool effects if you're not thinking about it too much. You're just sort of doing it. Um, I like doing stuff like that. It makes it not so scary, you know, because it's really easy. And so I find, too, that um, if I don't think too hard about it, that's when I come up with the really cool ideas if I just let myself chill out and have some fun. Because that's what art is all about anyway, is you're supposed to have fun. All right, let's try, ooh, this is a good one here. Um, somewhere I have some brushes. Oh, here they are, okay. This is my favorite brush in the whole wide world. This is a Polar Flow, um, one inch. It's really a watercolor brush. And then I also have one of Sterling's brushes, which is very similar. They have a, the plastic handle and their watercolor. Um, but I use these for acrylic all the time just because I can leave them in my water like a bad girl and they won't, they, they, they still come back and, and want to play. So um, one of the things I like to do here, I'm going to use this kind of a, as my palette and then you can just paint like this onto your plate and pull that up. And then this one here. So you can just keep layering and layering and there's still more paint on there. So I'm going to use this one. Pull that up. There you go. And then I like to think about the positive and negative effects of things. So here um, I painted onto this so there's there's silver paint on the back of this so I'm going to use it on the face down and then I just have to press it down with something like this and see so now on the same paper I've got the I guess that would be the negative and this would be the positive of it. So I like to play those off. And again, when I go back in at the end with these markers, then it makes it so that I have something to react to. So that's, that's what I'm working on here. Hang with me. Any, does anybody have any other questions? Is block printing ink too stiff for gel printing? I've never tried it, but um, I, go for it. I don't I see why not. Before. It's yeah. I mean, it's the, but block printing ink is normally oil based too. There's, there's so there is water based. 
like yeah. Small, like so then, but... and you, I like to use just water-based paints on here. On um, on these, on the uh, the speedball ones, I use the Akua inks, and those yeah. those are um, I think those are soy-based. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, but this to me holds a um, like a cleaner line. Um, and so I use this more for the fine art, and I use this more for craftier collage kind of stuff. I agree. It's almost like it's got a pack. Yeah, it's just a, it's a, it's a still a gel press, but it's a little bit finer. Yeah. It's a little bit harder. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So here. Oh, and one other thing you can do. Well, there's a bazillion other things you can do, but um, this is my bag of textures. So these are the catalysts. Um, scrapers so you can just kind of go whoosh, like that go like that and then that I don't, don't you do that to wipe it all over you <laughs> see so you get some nice layers going on and I just I, I love when you can when your your paper has kind of history to it I, that's why I like in paintings too where it's not just so topical because it seems like it's not done yet. So I like to push it as far as I can and sometimes go too far. So you kind of, then you know when, when to stop a little bit better. Uh, all right, so let's do some more texture. Let's see, this is some gold, we'll do that. dump some of this off out of here. All right. Oh, and this is a um, one of those trivet things. You put uh, like a hot pad kind of, and it's got a honeycomb texture on there. I like that. And again, I have that paint on this side, so now I'm going to put it somewhere else. You can go right there, which is kind of cool. And then... But see how much you can do in like so little time and just have a blast and <laughs> keep messing your studio up or your kitchen table or this stuff is thick. Yeah, it is. It's very thick. I think it's 140 pounds, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's nice. Ooh, and I got to show you one of the coolest things too about working on black paper. All right, so there's that. I love that. Okay, so this one's kind of dry. But the cool part about when you're working with metallics on black paper is when you tear it. So you get this nice edge. I love that. Whoa, See how you nice. get a, a nice edge there. And then this one is, um, you know, the paint goes all the way to the edge. But here I use these too. Um, strategically you can see so you can just layer it like that so then you're adding that line element to your collage if you want to that's just one of the cool things of that um, let's see I also have stamps here somewhere yes <laughs> it's in the file yeah I think I've told you all before when and when I work in my studio I have like four of these tables, two this way and two over there. And I start on one side and then, then I work my way around and it's just like a total trash mess. And then I work all the way around to the other side. It's like, okay, I think I'm done now. And then I have to clean up. <laughs> so, um, stamps. It's like a self-made timer. What's that? It's like a self-made right? timer. You, when you fill the tables, you're done. Yeah. <laughs> Or add another table to it. That would work too. We had a couple people asking you. A couple people asking um, how you clean the plates and the stencils. Okay, well, um, stencils. I'm kind of bad about cleaning, but what you can do if you were a good girl is um, soak them in water. And and actually, you know what really works well is Windex on cleaning stencils because um, it kind of breaks down the paint. On the gel plates, what I normally use is the Soho wipes, baby wipes, or, um, you know, uh, Lysol wipes. However, the Lysol wipes are a little bit scarce these days. So, um, but, but you do want, you can soak them in um, soap and water and then just wash the surface off. And again, you don't want to 
take a Brillo pad to it or anything like that because that'll mar your surface. And the, the key is to keep your surface clean but not gouged into, or, or you'll, you'll see it on your uh, work. You don't really want that. All right, so now you all have probably carved stamps before. We have, uh, Jerry's has the artsy stamps, the speedball stamps. Uh, I think there's a couple other ones, but some you can carve, like these guys here. You can take like easy carve and cut the blocks up. And yeah, these are so too. great because, you know, I used, I learned on the linoleum and man, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that stuff's hard to cut. And my hands found out about that too, that the blades are very sharp. Um, but these, they say they cut like butter and they really do. And um, you, you can kind of, these are the artsy ones and you can actually carve on all six sides of this. This particular one is only done on one side. But at any rate, you can take these and pull that image from there. But again, I have paint on here so I can put that down onto that surface. Pull it up close to you. So there you, you see that there. Perfect. There you go. See right there. And then, but it's on there too. So let me pull that so you can see that image. See, so now I have a positive one here and then this is where I pulled it off the plate there. So you can, I mean, it's endless. <laughs> you can just keep going all day long. Usually I turn the music on and I just paint until I'm can't anymore. Or it's, like I said, too full. <laughs> um, let's do some of these guys again. You can see I can't throw anything away. I did this project where the, um, it was, I guess, eight and a half by 11. And I used this size right here. So I had a bunch of these. I think I did a thousand of them. And, um, had these left over so of course I couldn't throw them away and so now I'll just use them on here okay yeah if the viewers want to see an amazing video of an artist studio that has like so many supplies of all sorts of kinds and kind of gadgets and gadgets and all these things your studio when we filmed there going back and looking watching the video was like all the drawers of things and <laughs> oh and I well, I revamped it I think since you guys have been there I got new shelving it's kind of organized wow. I labeled things I mean like That's wow nice before. kind of impressive actually for me <laughs> <laughs> okay um let's get some more of this thick paper get this. I like where this meets. Um, I, uh, like I said, I was working on this series earlier and I had three gel plate prints. I used the, I used two of the six by sixes and one eight by 10 because I liked this part where it met together, where it just kind of created something that I could go, Hmm, okay. I can do something with that in my next, uh, thing there. All right. So let's do maybe a couple more of these. Whoa, got a little crazy with it. <laughs> this is also a great way to use up like some of your dregs of your paint. If you have older paints or like a little bit left in a tube, it's great to use it on these. And because it really goes a long way, you can see I'm kind of slathering it on here because I want to get a little bit more of the texture going. Um, oh, and these are fun things to have too, you know, where you get your onions or your oranges or whatever. I'm always looking at that more than the fruit that's inside of them, but you can, this will help create some texture. You can get these little roller things or um, just take a regular sponge roller and wind it with rubber bands. That'll work too. And then you can pull that up there. Whoop. <laughs> Making a mess. Imagine that. 
can just make little things like this. Some other leaves here somewhere. There they are. It's not poison ivy, thank goodness. Got plenty of <laughs> 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 I am so allergic to that stuff. Oh my god. I look at it and I get itchy. Give your print some texture and give you some texture. <laughs> So here again, what it's going to do is this is going to create uh, like the blank shapes on this pull, and then but it's it's uh, putting those veins into the gel plate once I pull that leaf up. And you can also take a clean brayer to do this part of it, but I never have a clean brayer <laughs> available. So. <laughs> Okay. Oh, that's so pretty. It's like a moon. It is. Okay, so now I'm going to pull these guys up gently. And then remember, I have paint on there, so I'm going to put that on the side right here and set that aside for a second because I want to pull this up before it gets too dry. Okay, now this is where, if I were teaching a class for Art of the Carolinas, I would t turn you all on and go, okay, I'm ready for the ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of an anticlimactic ooh, but hey, <laughs> it's still it's something that you, to, that you can work yeah, with. Yeah. I love the metallics on that black paper. Yeah, it's... It's, and the, there's um, surprisingly a lot of manufacturers that make different kinds of metallics. Plus you can mix them in too. If you can just have regular acrylic paints that you can mix in with the metallics and those look cool on the black too. So here I'm just, I'm using the back of those leaves to put the impression on here and hopefully, yeah, that nice. did a little something there. All right. Okay, I'm going to set these aside and let them dry just a little bit. And then um, we'll go on to the next part. And what I also want to do is show you some of the pieces that I've done in the past with um, some of the different colors. So I'm just going to kind of spread these out a bit. But you can see, well, maybe you can't, how many, how Many we did just in what, 30 minutes, if that? Oh yeah, you've got a pile of them under, over there. Too. Yeah. That's a lot. And these are just the beginning parts. That one's torn. So even like and interference here. colors and things like that would work really well with black. Yes, yeah. And Jeez. um and and actually any kind of um pastelish color mm. works great on here. There's some that won't even show up because they're transparent and so you can't work with those, but um the the lighter colors too um, work well. So here I'm gonna set this just kind of wash these off a little bit. And you can see how it's not coming up that great. Now I can let this set and dry it completely and then put um, wet paint over top of it and then that'll pull it off too. Um, okay, so let me show you some of these. These are some of my other pieces that I did previously. Again, the, uh, and this is just playing. <laughs> and there's some of them are pretty awesome. Okay. 
you can put your paint on and then like uh, not carve into it, but gently, uh, you know, pull the paint away uh, so that you can get these different designs. And a lot of these I just keep in a box and, and pull them out. Um, if I'm looking for, you know, some earth tone colors, then I can use this in that piece too. And these are some I did on some thinner paper and um, went in with some pastels and that sort of thing. But the, the basic shape right here is done on the gel plate print. Same with this one here. The, this is the gel plate print. And then these are stamps on there. Some more stamps that I carved here. And it's messing around. These are some other pieces that I've cut for future um, uh, collages. Some more leaves. Ooh, that's pretty. Look at the color in that. Yeah, and that. and again, it's it's uh, it's not cleaning <laughs> that plate, and um, just experimenting with. This is a great time to experiment with different kind of colors, different color combinations, stuff that you think, oh, that really doesn't go together. But then you put it on one paper, and it's like, wow, that looks pretty right. dynamic. Um, Ooh, look at that. Yeah, and it's, I call it glorified doodling because it, it's pretty much what it is. You know, you're just kind of messing around and seeing what might happen. Um, and, and using all the supplies that you have. If you're like me, you've got 12 million different kinds of supplies. And this is a, a place, an area where you can do things pretty freely. And, oh, I should have... One of these, I, ha I think this one, I had a shirt made out of it, sent it into a company, and they um, actually made a shirt from a design like this. Wow. And that one, too. <laughs> so, um, all right. Let's start using the other stuff. Somebody is asking if palette knives will work, or are they too hard for the plates? You don't want to... Again, you don't want to gouge into it. So most of the tools that I use on the surface are plastic. Um, those Princeton blades, the, any of those ones, the catalyst ones, are, give enough where it would scrape it off, but they're still silicon. Yeah, they're soft. I mean, if you had a plastic knife and you just kind of used the side of it, that might be fine. Um, but like on these, um, these catalyst ones, you know, you can you can just pull the surface like that, you know, to create. That's kind of cool. <laughs> Let's see what that looks like. <laughs> it's kind of neat. And then I still have paint on here, so I'm going to spread this around. Maybe like that. Okay, and then clean my plate a little bit. <laughs> yeah, because I think if you've not used a gel plate before, you have no idea exactly how soft it is. I mean, yeah. You can even scratch yeah, it I mean, you can see how yeah. flexible it is. It's yes. like jello, but not, not exactly like jello. But it's close. These. Um, just trying to clean this too. All right, let's go ahead and get into the PBO markers. These are just, I'm going to set these aside and clean them later. And then um, these markers are like awesome. I love them. So what I've, I've, I've already shaken these out so the paint is right there. But what I was talking about before is I have these shapes and images and um, things that I can go back into and just kind of create whatever. So I can just kind of do my doodling sort of thing. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is like script sort of writing and um, what I'll, what I do is I either like listen to music and I'll write those words, or sometimes I kind of journal in there, but I make it so nobody knows my language. 
<laughs> Nobody knows what it says except for me. The Joe makes her really but, mad. <laughs> but for some of you youngsters out here, this is kind of like cursive writing. We used to, <laughs> we used to learn that in, in uh, grade school. And I went to Catholic school too, so I've got great cur cursive writing because it seems like I was always having to do that for punishment. Um, <laughs> so it's a, it's a fun way to bring that into your work too. And, um, it kind of, it, it's kind of like writing in a diary or whatever, um, where you get it out, um, of you and onto the paper. And sometimes you find out some interesting things about yourself that you never really knew or never really addressed before. And, but Hey, it's, uh. It's your art time, so that's what you do. And you can, you know, do like little squiggly thingies like this. But see how I'm just kind of responding to what's already there? These big bad boys are pretty cool too. Let's find one that'll be fun. How about this one? Okay, so these, you can create a rhythm sort of thing across your paper to help your eye move around. Um, you can, you know, make it big and crazy like that. You can actually flick these too. You know, to make some little drippage going on on your piece. And some of these, are, again, they're just fun to do, but they're kind of exciting, I think. Um, what do you think, Amy? <laughs> it, it's, just, it's so neat because there's neat moments in all of the, they become pieces. They, there's right. There's like these beautiful moments in all of them and then just adding to it with the, with the markers yeah. you know, changes the focus and just, it's just really neat. And I, I always do these like stitch like things. I'm a seamstress too, so sometimes I like to put stuff together with stitches. We'll do a zigzag on this one. <laughs> but see what I mean? You can just kind of enhance and respond to what's already there. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just kind of, like I said, glorified doodling. Just, uh, Some like that. Do that over here too. I don't know what they're saying, Katie, but I'm saying this is really relaxing to watch. <laughs> no, this, yeah. this is art form. It's just like, uh, ooh. yeah, it's kind of. People are like uh, ASMR, like they're yeah. all just like. The marker sound, the marker yeah, the sound, sound too. Wake up so now. Right. That's what they're talking about. <laughs> that marker is just like, uh, that, that, oh. Right, but it's, it's kind of like, you could even do Zentangle on here. That would mm -hmm. be pretty awesome. I'm not a tangler, but um, I think that you doing with these markers on black paper would be just delightful. Um, I don't even know any Zentangle. Well, let me see. I think... This might be something. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's just repetitive patterns. I mean, it's, right? It's the it's irrelevant as if it's a it's not like a specific thing. I think it's just kind of that beauty of re almost like some of the Indian style mm -hmm. decorative arts. Yeah, and I, I find a lot of that in my work too, um, where it's it's kind of um, I don't know African or. It reminds me a so, lot of your um, of your encaustic work, it, like different things that you were doing. I was like, that reminds me of this in our encaustic work. Right. But see, it's just kind of fun to write this stuff. I don't know what I just wrote, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really nice. I don't know, but you look like you could be a doctor with that, right? Yes, there. I am, <laughs> Doctor Sharon. <laughs> 
<laughs> Your artistic prescription pad. <laughs> But again, you, you're just kind of building, and not, none of these are done yet. Um, but I, they're, it's something that you could be looking for the perfect thing to add to your piece. And it's like, ah, there it is, right there. Let me get this right here. But yeah, these PBO markers are pretty cool, I think. Let's try this white one. Yeah, I was waiting for that to see what ha what happens with that. Mm-hmm. Like that. But you can do any kind of designs, and usually, if you if you notice when you do when you do doodle, um, you have kind of your own way of doing. It. It's like your signature or you, the way you write your cursive letters or whatever. It you kind of go back to that, and um, I tend to do repetitive lines and. Um, and, and make your eye move around your painting. I even do that with my paintbrush on a larger canvas. I'll, you know, I'll make repetitive lines so that it's, I'm kind of telling the viewer, this is where I want your eye to move. So um, that you can do that with these too. Let's go to this one here. And here again, you can just take and make your leaf shapes better define them and then you know do your and then do that the rest of that there kind of interesting a little something let's see That says, so now you can show me your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that if they did have any of these items and they did any of this with us, they can share it in the Jerry's Live group. Oh, yeah, that Facebook would be great. Too. Don't forget to hashtag it with the jail. One, it's 174. Um, so hashtag jail 174. So that if you've done any of this with Sharon, then you can post it in the group and everybody will be able to see it. Cool. <laughs> they're they're sneaky like that. They will like play along, and then all sorts of stuff gets posted. And it's oh, good, really cool. Because it's strange here with like, and that's with virtual virtual AOC. The beauty of that is you'll actually be able to see your students, right? If you're teaching, where with this, it's kind of you're up here and it's you, and you get questions, but it's it, you, you're not sure like, are people participating? Are they sleeping? Are they? <laughs> angry you're not doing it right you know Wake and, then, up, yeah. and then they post up in the group and it's like yay people played along cool. i love seeing when they play along i know that always makes me so happy oh i love that stamp so um on that one i just did my stamp i used this as a palette pretty much and then i'm going to take this and kind of respond again down here. Um, actually, I kind of like this area. I want the green under that and then the silver on top of the gold. That's just... Yeah, you can get some really, you know, when you're working with different kinds of um, paints and markers, like a lot of times mm -hmm. I'll use um, heavy body paints, fluid paints, mostly acrylics, um, you know, some of the Lumiere, mm -hmm. some of the metallic, some of the, you know, um, white or whatever, and just kind of mix it on there. And it's like, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, you normally wouldn't do that. But like I said, when I was, when I rearranged my studio, 
I had a lot of paint that was like, you know, just had a little bit left in it. I'm like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a project using that and, you know, moving it along. So that's what I did. That's awesome. And you can also take this and print onto something as well. Um, like here, I'm going to take this and just slap it down like that. So if you wanted to paint on a larger piece, like on a canvas, you can just do your thing on here and um, with a brayer, <laughs> take this and and notice how I'm brayering where I'm not just going like this, I'm picking it up. So that helps your roller to move and actually spread the paint all around. So then you can take that and um, cardboard. If you get all those Amazon packages that <laughs> keep coming to your house, then <laughs> <laughs> or Jerry's boxes, <laughs> I saw one here earlier. Um, Again, I've got paint on here so I can put it on there too. So you can get little marks like that. And let's see. Unexpected stamping. Yeah. And I can't get over how thick this paint is. There these know, right? papers are. And that gives you something yeah. nice to respond to as yeah. well. And it doesn't have to be, um, you know, a finished piece that's this size. You can you can tear the edges off of there. You could burn the edges. You can. Um... <laughs> I'm not a pyro. I swear yes, to God. You are. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. How many things have we burned? You burn some every time you can you, Yes, we have. <laughs> Oh my God, what are you going to do? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I think what, what's hard for, I, I think, them to see, with since I can see the camera from the side, um, there's, like, with using that heavy body acrylic, there's, it makes for some beautiful textures as you're layering yes. the colors. Even though it's stamping, because it's a heavy body acrylic, you're still getting layers and layers and, you know... It's, it's really, when you're seeing it up close, it's very visual. Well, and you can, um, like here, just just from the um, brayer, you get that texture right there. And then when you add more texture and then pull it fast, you know, it, it, I, I like it that it doesn't have to be perfect. I don't want it to be perfect. Because right. um, you don't know what that is. I was going to do something specific on here, and I can't remember what it was. How about another leaf? We'll do that. Yeah, so now we're at a point where we're almost done. And so this is, look at how much she's done in an hour. <laughs> no, I just, because these are three hour workshops. I right. Mean, you know, this is, this is a lot of stuff that if you, especially if you're leading people through by a demo, then you still have two hours to to be working after that right. and get instructor feedback. And I mean, this is, this is, you know, three hours seems like it's really short. You can really make artists work in three hours, you know? Okay. So there's that. And then I'm going to peel these guys off and you know what? Maybe I'll put them back in the same place as they oh, were. Okay. Well, kind of sort of the same place. <laughs> At least I'll get that texture detail on there. Bada boom. Nice. Okay. And then look at all this stuff. <laughs> Does anybody have any uh, questions, Katie? Just last questions that maybe we've blown past and
Yeah, and I mean, I like to like do all this and then do the next part with the, the markers and then do the next part with the smaller markers and then start tearing them up and put, making them into something else. You know, because it's all kind of a process and a layered process that you wouldn't do if I was just working on one piece. Right. You know, right. Um, and I guess this, I always have worked this way where I, I have to work on like 12 things at one time just because. Keeps me out of trouble. Well, I think there's something to be said too for the, the unplanned immediacy of it. Yes. When you work that way, in that you because the, it's just like um, like practicing drawing. The more you practice, the better you're going to get in doing this because you're almost essentially practicing each time, but trying something different. You're creating this great learning curve, but then you're also giving yourself. All these extras to then work with so I feel like exactly the the not even balance the um you're just you've got so much to choose from and so many ways that you can kind of go from those then right because they're so vastly different and it's just it's an experiment thing where you can keep pushing it and usually I'll work in the same color way like going back to these guys here um, I, I worked with the, the blue and the gold and then a little bit of white when I came back in. But you can see the array of designs that you can get just by, I mean, <laughs> they keep going. <laughs> and a lot of these I'll doodle on, you know, I'll do the painting part in my studio and then I'll take them in and, you know, maybe doodle on them while I'm watching TV or something like that. Oh, um, you know, there's... It's always time for art, right? Right. <laughs> right. Last questions? No? All right. So, Ooh, I, well, I'm sorry. Oh. I lied. <laughs> it popped up right when I was <laughs> um, Somebody on YouTube was asking me if you put a spray on it to finish them or if you need to seal them or anything like that. For these, mm -hmm. um, no, you don't have to because they're, it's acrylic paint. So um, acrylic paint, you don't have to put anything on. On some of those other ones here, um, on this one, I put, th this is very thin paper too, but on these, you can see maybe a little bit of shine on there. Um, these I did paint with, um, I put the, some satin varnish on, mm -hmm. but you know, I only did that because I've got pastel on here too. So I kind of wanted to pull all the sheens together. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I just did it with a satin varnish, but for the most part, I don't, um, I don't varnish anything or seal it or anything like that. Um, I'll tear it up, put it into a collage. And then I always, I always, um, put a varnish on my collages. <laughs> and then one more thing. Yep. They were asking about like other surfaces. So somebody asked about if do you always use the black paper or do you use white paper, other papers? Can you lay canvas over top of it and pull a print with that? Yeah, you can do, I, I just like the look of the metallic on the black, but you can do this with any kind of paper, with rice paper, with craft paper, with white paper, with um, copier paper, with decorative stuff. Um, I mean, deli paper is another one that you can get like at Costco or whatever, and you can just pull a ton of gel plate prints from that and again, use them and incorporate them into your work. Um, you can take those and tear them up and um, gel, gel um, uh, glue them to uh, uh, the canvas and then start over on top of that and paint something completely different and just use that sort of as your background. So yeah, fabric, I mean, nothing is safe around me. <laughs> <laughs> and with acrylic paints, I mean, they go on yeah. anything. Right. You can paint on cardboard if you wanted to. But, um, but yeah, you can definitely do these on canvas. Like I said, um, you can take a smaller canvas and put it right onto the plate, or you can take the plate and put it onto the canvas too. Oh, yeah. So um, just depending on how you're working, you can use this kind of as your brush. <laughs> Like, look out, canvas, here I come. Yeah. <laughs> then one other person said she primarily, or they, excuse me, primarily use watercolors. Is there a way to use a gel plate with watercolor paint, maybe for light background washes or something? I don't see why not, um, because especially if you have the tube um, paints, because then you can kind of use those 
in a thicker manner. You know, I mean, you can still water them down, but you can put them on here. And they, they would probably sort of bead up, which might be kind of cool. And you could also try that on Yupo paper mm. just because you can. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely try it. And that's that's what you're supposed to be doing is, you know, learn what's supposed to be done and, and then break the rules. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love breaking the rules. Mm -hmm. You find out the cool stuff that way. Right. You know, no. so yeah, I would definitely try it with watercolors. Might have to go home and do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Art of the Carolinas, the virtual Art of the Carolinas, what are the dates, Sharon? Okay. So, um, the dates are Monday through Saturday, November the 9th through November the 14th. And each day we have uh, nine workshops. So, there'll be three that are running from 9 till 12, three that are running from 1 till 4, and three from 5 till 8. So, you can look it up. Uh, if you go to artofthecarolinas.com, you can look up by instructor, by date, or by medium. And um, there's so many things to offer on there. And I think you'll be delighted with our, our choices for this year. And, um, and again, I'm, I'm really excited about this. I'm a little nervous about it, too. But um, I think that this is a new way of, um, you know, working. And, and you see, this was one hour. If you were working along with me, you'd have to clear this out and get yeah. another table and do that. And, and that's kind of what the goal is, that you'll sort of have that undivided attention from the instructor because he or she is going to be talking directly to you for a good 45 minutes. So during that time, you can either take notes, you can paint along, or you can just watch. That's all completely up to you. But then you'll have those second two hours to discover new things, um, you know, ask questions and get some feedback from the instructor. So um, I think it'll be pretty cool. And it sounds like from in, in being in some of these uh, kind of virtual setups where we're training the artists and their assistants, like some people are going to run things if, if somebody's used to Sterling Edwards, he's probably going to run it very much like what his workshops exactly. are Exactly. Like. And, and that's the point, right. too, is we want to make it so that it's like, like you being there. Right. And one of the questions that has been brought up is, are you going to be recording these? And no, we will not. So it's just like being at the show, only without the chaos involved, too. <laughs> and Katie won't be yelling at anybody. Yeah, yes. I don't think. I don't know what I'm going to do this year. It's going to be weird. <laughs> we'll get you on there live somewhere, Katie. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, so um, I, I think it'll be pretty interesting if you just give it a shot. You know, um, I, I think it, it's, it's, it's something new and hey, it's 2020, so might as well do it now, right? Right. <laughs> right. I agree. So, so artofthecarolinas.com yes. is where they go to look at the classes and to sign up. And how many classes did you say that there are total? We have 52 classes. Um, as of this morning, we had three that were sold out, but we still had plenty of availability. Um, uh, yeah. And it, you can always email me, Sharon at jerrysartorama.com, or I think it's info. I, I, you can contact me through the website, too. Um, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. And um, I'm right there at the end of my phone or at the end of my email. Um, so, yeah, check it out. And, um, and then you'll have to come and join us next year. Mm -hmm. But, again, the dates are November 9th through the 14th. So that's Monday through Saturday. And um, we're going to have some fun, so I think you should join us. <laughs> All right. And, and also, I think that the classes, are it's, it's not like AOC where you can walk up at the last second. That's the other thing. That right. Yeah. Sure we're going to be closing out the classes um, two or three days prior to actually going live. That way we make sure that everybody has pre-registered for the class because you have to register to get into the waiting room for the webinar. So we just want to make sure that everybody is there when they should be. And so we'll be sending out um, more information to you about three days before you go, we go live. And, um, and then you'll be, um, all you have to do is click on a link and that'll take you into the waiting room for the workshop. And then at the specific time, then you go live and you start having some fun. So, um, 
it'll be a little bit different. So don't wait till the last minute. Yes. And um, yeah, that way every you'll be comfortable, and that that's what we want. We want this to be a comfortable, fun thing for everybody to do, and not for people to freak out and stuff. We just want you to go. Okay, I'm ready to paint. Here we go. <laughs> Very cool. Well, thank you so much for coming thank on. Thank you. And doing this and giving us all this great swap information. Swap spaces? Nah, it's okay. They can look at you. You look pretty nice too. <laughs> So, and, well, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. You're surprisingly not very dirty, so this is, I, well, this is not the Sharon I'm used to. <laughs> just try to be calm. I know, you have like just two little bits of paint and that's it. So. Well, it's a brand new apron, oh, too. Oh, well. so, Because the oh, other right. ones, she couldn't even, it was like... <laughs> Stand up on their own. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, so if you wanted to look at, at any of the gel plates that we did today, or the paper, um, the brayer, I think... Uh, go to jerrysartorama.com, JL174 for the keyword, and that will take you to the listing. Next week, uh, we are doing the follow-up from the sculpture episode that we had uh, five weeks ago. Um, and we are going to have the armature. We're going to be putting clay on it. We're going to be talking about how you can customize an armature, looking at a whole bunch of the different supplies more in depth that we did then and um everybody take care check out or the carolinas.com and we will see you next week yay bye bye see ya